How many things have we caught on tape that have gone terribly wrong? Everything, every one of them. I think I can knock it out with your help. Thanks, I'll be here. <laughs> should we get after it? <laughs> yeah, we probably should. Okay, I'm gonna go sand then. Okay. That's not even the first thing on the list. Fine. I'll head up there and do that. Okay. As soon as I finish my Joe. That sweet bean juice. Mm-hmm. A fine cup of Joe. You are ready to rock. Not yet. This is gonna be a long time. I might be up there a couple of hours. I'm back. All right, I'm off. I'll see okay. you later. Adios. Yeah, baby. So today I have a little painting project, but it's dangerous territory because Chris is up there sanding, and when that happens, stuff flies everywhere and it gets all over my paint job. So I have shrouded off the room that I'm painting in, and hopefully none of the debris comes in and gets me. This is the face of someone with very little faith. And I'll be painting the inside of those corner cabinets with this stuff. and spraying on a coat of this to the interior blue cabinets. It's a two-in-one paint and primer that should work well with vinyl, we hope. This was like stupid simple and worked out great. Now for the metallic paint on the inside of those corner cabinets. I'm now a huge fan of spray paint. It's easy application, no messy cleanup, total winner. Chris had to take a break from sanding so he could let his boob sweat dry out and work on something else. See these rails? Mm -hmm. I've installed them. I've also installed the parts that go up on the boat but I have not tried to put these in their tracks yet. Another one of those things where this could go Terribly wrong because they suck. Good. I think so. I think that's great. What do you think? Yay! We have a drawer. One go down, one to go. Now that the top drawer is complete, time for the bottom drawer. Such aggressive drill bits. I am modifying the face of this drawer to accommodate the drawer face. Cool. Whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> what I need to do is put out the notch for the hardware because these are designed for half inch thick pieces and half inch plus a half inch equals one inch, which is twice as thick as we want it to be. So we'll just cut this notch out, drill the face in at the appropriate size, and then uh, assemble the rest. The seemed so loud all of a sudden, and then I realized I'm wearing my headphones, which I always have on. Yeah. That's why I wear those kids. I'm not listening to audiobooks. Yes, you were. Hi! Hi. I'm done with that part. So we're gonna take this up on the boat. Mm -hmm. And we'll install this. And you might be looking at this and saying, Chris, were you drunk when you designed this handle? It's off center. And my response to that would be, yes, I was, but that's beside the point. This is actually designed to line up with the drawer that's above it. Ah, this one's slightly off center. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. it does. Mm -hmm. Before we get the drawer back in, I 
want to get a latch in place. This guy. Looks like you're praying. I'm not. Probably should be. Let's just sit there spinning. After a small struggle, the latch is finally secure. How come I have to do all the work while you just sit there with a the camera? It's the choices that we made. What was your choice? My choice? Oh, mine was the default. You decided we're going to rebuild a boat. I'm to blame for this damned ship. Yep. Yeah, it looks pretty great. Not done yet. You gotta put a face on this. Filming <laughs> my ghetto fixing. The face wasn't quite flush with the box, so we had to shim it up and secure it with a few extra screws. Got it! Yay! Looks pretty good, except for the two holes that had a Frankenstein in the front of it. That's okay, you can get that industrial look we were going for, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Drawer action. Drawer action. Ching! And probably the easiest, it will be finding a mirror for above the vanity in the aft head. Now I have a budget of $80. Not really sure how that was determined, but that's my budget. That's what I'm working with. And I have an idea of what I want. Um, it's probably going to be pretty easy to find. I may have gone slightly over budget, but uh, it'll be worth it. So I just found this gem hiding in a drawer from when we got married. It was a nice little wedding gift from our Seattle friends. So I'm gonna take advantage of that right now. I think there's like $100 on it, so thank you. Hold up, time out. Chris just came up with this fun idea slash project. Good morning. Hey. Hi. I took your list and I changed it. Yeah, you did. I like this though. That was a quick reaction. It looks like <laughs> this doesn't look daunting at all. There's like nothing on it. Well, we've got all these to put on there. Oh, shoot. It's just very visual. You can grab what you're working on and put it here so you know it's worked on. And then you can put it over here when it's done. And these are the things we haven't done yet. But this guy can go right into here because we've already started this project. And that's what I'm going to work on while you Finish that project. tape all these up here. Yeah. And then you can move that one into this column and then over here and it could be the first finished thing. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go sand. Okay. Now presenting the Mega List. I didn't move this over. You should go do that for me. There, now can I start? Mm hmm. Good. This project. Means we get to buy the new drill press. This is Chris's neat card trick. He uses the thickness of the cards to evenly distribute the spacing for the doors so they don't rub or get stuck. This method works pretty great, but as we're discovering, nothing is ever totally perfect. Now time to install the latching mechanism on the inside. Forty-two minutes and several broken screws later. I just uh, let Owen screw in some hinges, so the likelihood of these working well is somewhere close to the shape of an orange. What? what? Zero. Wow. 
You ready? You ready to test this? Look at those hinges. I mean, they're in. You've done that. Why is there four if we only needed three? Because they sell them in packs of two, son. I already knew that. <laughs> All right, are you ready to test this thing? I'm gonna lift it up. Yep. What, what is this hand for? I'm gonna grab it. Okay, but uh, you tell me if I'm gonna hit this media cabinet when we lift this up. Okay. That would not be your fault. That would be my design flaw. Okay. But I think we should have at least an inch of clearance. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Boo! Owen! I have failed you, son. That goes up and down quite nicely. Yeah. Got a nice, pleasant creak, oh. too. Pull it. I want to hear it creak again. No, like slow, like a boat. Yeah. That's got a good boat creak to it. Now we have to install the gas shocks to help us aid us when it's super heavy and there's a mattress on it. All right, I got it. Dude, Owen. Dude, Dad. Dude, Owen. Dude, Dad. Good work. Hey, dude, viewers. Dude. 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 Next project. Okay. Do you want to talk about these? These batons? Yes. Sure. My nightsticks. Bow. Ow. Yeah. Clocky good. Clocky good. <laughs> So now that Owen and I have installed the hinges on the aft hatch in the uh, bedroom platform, it's time to assist the lifting process. And that's where these guys come in. These are gas shocks, struts, things. Um, basically what this will do is it's easy to lift up and down right now, but there's no giant mattress on it full of like blankets and things. These will help once the full weight of it. These can even lift up the, blanket, the bed and Kelly. So how these things work, they're just like the ones that you find in your car. And apparently they're really not uh, that susceptible to the marine environment. I talked to the guy, if he lied to me, he better send me some new ones for free because he assured me that these for a car are gonna be just fine inside the boat. If you want to install them this way, that's pretty much it. These will go on the top and this strut, the, the rod needs to go down. So every time it goes in, it gets a nice little lube on it so it comes back out smooth. I read does that it, in the instructions. Does it come pre-lubed? If you do, yeah, it's, it's encased in here. Oh. So if you do it like here, it'll all pull down here and when that gets compressed, it won't re-lubricate itself. But like this, it'll hang out down here and when it gets compressed, it's constantly going through the lubricant. Oh, okay. And then this goes on the top, mm -hmm. like that. And then that will go up with the hatch. And then these guys go on the side and those stay fixed. Okay. Let's go install it. All I'm right. excited. I hope this works like I hope it will, which means it won't. Me too, because it took forever to find these parts. First step will be to install these on here. And the way you do that is there's these little clips inside there. And you don't just want to shove that ball in there like I initially thought you would, and it would click into place. What you want to do is get the screwdriver underneath it. And then as you kind of pry that up, you see that opening and making it available. Mm -hmm. And when you let go, it closes back up again. Can you see that? I kind of can. That happens on both sides. So when you go like this, here we go. Don't cut yourself in the wrist. Just like that. That was super ease balls. Yep. And there's a little bead of, of uh, lubricant in there. So you want to work that you can hear it. Like mac and cheese in the pot. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do another one because that was fun. Just like that, folks. Yep, I can hear it. So we thought we had it all figured out, and we felt pretty confident with this job, so we went ahead and installed one. Okay, so we have to check the angle, and the angle is supposed to be roughly 45 degrees this way, so I think we might be a little high, but I'm just gonna check here. Yep, this is more like 100 degrees. This only goes to 90. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so that's where we screwed up. So we just put the bottom part back. Yeah, I also think it would be smart to come out farther because that gives it more lift power. Okay. So I'm moving everything. I'm going to move this first and then we will use that as its gauge for what 45 degrees will be on the back. Is that better? Okay. Yep. Okay. Moment of truth. That's like. <laughs> it is that hard though. I can't do it with one hand. 
Turns out these are too short and the part of the shaft that doesn't compress won't allow the lid to close. That's annoying. Oh. <sighs> Fart. Good news and bad news. This seems to be a workable solution, but it's a little too strong and a little too short because it only goes to here and stops. So it looks like we're gonna have to find one that can be installed either further back so it lays down on itself or uh, further down here. You suck. On to the next project. Okay, we can't exactly check it off the list, but we did start it. One idea we came up with was to use or repurpose some rigging hardware and cable like these. The challenge with these is, this side will be threaded normally, but this side will use reverse threads, which makes sense for rigging because you can tighten or loosen them both at the same time. Finding the proper hardware is next to impossible, but Chris came up with this solution. By cutting off both ends of the threaded piece, you'll get these. Custom, whoo, hot screw ends for the uh, fittings. So we can just use these over again. Basically, you just stick the wire in there and tighten this down and it's supposed to hold it. Hmm. We will see, Kelly. You know what would be helpful is if you and Justin want to go up and identify the height. Oh, by the way, this is Justin. Why are all the tools vanishing? Ever since I let you in here, Kelly. No, it's not me. I don't even use those. We're going to measure where we want the cable to go. And to go from about here to the other side. Ready? Ready. Let's do this. Okay. I have like three and a half inches in mind. Or three four. and a half? What does that look like? Uh, let's see. Three and a half would be right here. Okay. I'm going to quickly Google cable shelves and see if there's a standard for this. Okay. Just type it type type do da here. And bingo! There we have it. Three inches. Three so. inches is about here. One inch back. Roger. Three inches high. Is the drill up here, Kel, or do I need that down? I don't think it's up here. Got her? I believe so. The perfect size of 9 sixty-fourths. Ah, yes. It looks like you were just drilling into Justin's hand. I am. He's being a man about it. Should, should be <laughs> ah! This may not work. <laughs> it's an opposite thread. One of them, half of them are opposite threads. So that's that's that. We'll flank both sides with a washer. So it looks good. Looks real good. Mm-hmm. Everything in 316 stainless. Not that that's required on the inside of the belt, but it's better. Do you hear yourself? No, I just see that little metal file. Yeah. It was poking my finger and I didn't want to embed it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. How's that, Kelly? Does that meet your approval? Yep, looks great. Does it look equidistant from the surface, Kelly? Mm-hmm. Nice and, and parallel? Hot. Yes. Let's check in and see how our list is progressing. That didn't finish. Well, this is depressing, but hey, remember that mirror I ordered? Your package has arrived. It has. Wouldn't it be <laughs> bad luck if it's already broken? Ooh, wow. The mirror is exposed. It is. Perfect. There you go. This is a, 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 a gross waste of space at present. We should put something right here. And I think that mirror you bought is the perfect thing. I think you're right. Same, that looks perfect. It's like a beautiful mm -hmm. portrait. No, it really does. It, you know what? I think you have it upside down. I don't, Kelly. It's a circle. <laughs> We've discussed this. That's why circles are great, because you can't screw them up. Okay. Well, that's it. Another item. High five! I think that's all we're going to get done for this weekend, Kel.
It's getting wet and miserable outside. I was thinking a nice warm cocktail sounds good. What do you think? I think that sounds great. All right, we'll make one then. Okay. To the kitchen! Ah, coffee drinks. Can you get more adult than pouring alcohol in your coffee? I don't think so. Today, we're here in the dining room because I've been banned from making cocktails in our ugly kitchen by Kelly and her sister-in-law, and technically my sister-in-law, right? Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, that's math. This is a take on one of like the most popular coffee drinks, and that would be a Spanish coffee. This is uh, my version of it. This is a Moroccan coffee. It starts with this, of course, 151 rum. Pour just a bit in the bottom of each glass. Make sure your glass is tempered because we're gonna light things on fire. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Oh wait, I've already screwed up. Before you pour your alcohol into the cup, which is what always got me in trouble when I used to bartend, you want to sugar the rim. Ah. Take your citrus, run it around the rim. You can use a lemon or a lime or even water if you want to for this. Give it a little dunk and some sugar. You can use regular white sugar, but I like the prettiness and the complexity of flavor of the brown kind. Now we can pour our alcohol in there. We're gonna pour it all in there. Wanna know why? Because I need to sugar this room too. This next part is where you can get theatrical. And the keys to any bartender who knows is to attempt to keep your cocktail alight while you add the extra liquor. That's gonna be impossible because I don't have four spouts today. So what I thought I would do is pre-build all the extra booze into this jigger. Now normally I would throw in a half ounce of Kahlua. Here's where things get crazy. Rumple mints. Rumple mints is a high proof peppermint schnapps and it is a delicious thing to add to cocoa and all sorts of things, including this cocktail. We're gonna go ahead and add half an ounce of that. And finally, I would add a full ounce of Bailey's Irish Cream. You can also use other kinds of Irish Cream. I like St. Brennan's if you can find that. That one is a pretty price conscious alternative to Bailey's, which is obviously the most expensive. Now that our booze is ready, we don't want it to curdle, so it's time to get going. Take your stick lighter. All right, now you want to take your booze and twist your glass to attempt to caramelize the sugar that's on the rim. That's not super important, but it is nice to get a little bit of crystallization on that rim. Uh, your glassware can explode on you, so be safe. There's another cool thing you can do. Grate a little fresh nutmeg on there. Oh, look at that. It burns too. That smells fantastic. I think it's all over the table. Luckily, I just wiped down this table in preparation so I can show you the pyrotechnics of the nutmeg. Then you want to tilt your glass away and slowly add your booze. It's all gonna be on fire, but don't worry. It won't burn you. It's nice and piping hot. This is gonna to spill too. Pour in your coffee all the way to the top. Right there. And now if you want to put my finishing touch on there, you'll add a little bit of whipped cream. Just a dollop. Delicious. A little fresh nutmeg on top. And there you have it. I've heard this called the Moroccan coffee before. I have had this before. I am not the originator of this recipe, but as far as coffee cocktails go, this is my absolute favorite. The Moroccan coffee I knew from before just had Kahlua and Bailey's in it. The Rumple Mints was an addition that someone showed me that makes a huge difference and is definitely worth adding. Enjoy. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you wanna keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. Here you are, darling. Oh, why well, thank you. It's a little warm. That's one of those things that I hate about uh, going to bars and ordering coffee drinks is they're often lukewarm because of all the stuff they pour into the hot coffee. Makes sense. But these, rocket hot. Cheers. Cheers. Another successful weekend. This is a special shout out to my friend Derek, who I'm sure has never seen a single one of my videos. <laughs> Thanks again to the Seattle folks for the wonderful wedding gift. It turned into a mirror that will be a part of our boat until it breaks. Yep. 
Ha, ha, ha.